Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back on my channel. Today we have the second video of our MATLAB series and today we are going to talk about the GUI, so the graphical user interface that I have shown you in the last video at the end after installing MATLAB and we are going to talk about the GUI itself, what the workspace is, how you can use the GUI, where you can find useful commands and slowly getting started by creating our first variables and also how you can use the workspace, save variables, also delete some of them and to really learn how you can use the workspace for your needs. We will also have a look at the help function as well as the documentation that you can use for your projects in order to work efficiently. Other than that, I also show you how you can use existing projects from MATLAB and how you can use these tutorials from MathWorks in order to solidify your knowledge within MATLAB. So I would say without talking too much, let's jump right into MATLAB and let's get started. So here we are now in MATLAB and as you can see we have several options here or several actually plenty of buttons that we can use. So here the cursor is blinking as you can see. This middle column, this big section here is the command window. On the right hand side we can see the workspace where variables are saved for instance. On the left hand side we can see the current folder we are in or the current directory. We can also change that by using these icons here. And we have three tabs at the very top of our GUI. Here we can find very important and useful buttons like creating a new script, a live script which is very nice, we can import data for instance or we can change our layout. Let's say I want to use a different layout. Let's say I want to have two columns like this and my workspace is now on the lower left side and you can really personalize this whole GUI, how you want to use it to be as efficient as possible. If you want to get back to the default layout, you can click on layout and go back to default. So very simple. What I like to do personally is use this setup, but when creating a script, I would undock the script by clicking this small icon here and clicking undock. That's because I work with uh, two screens. So I would have, on one screen, I would have this whole GUI here on the screen and on the other screen I would have the running script. So when running the script I would see in the command window when variables are written into the command window to make sure or validate if the results make sense or if I should interrupt the running script. We also have the option to go to plots. So we have no variables selected so this is grayed out here. And we can also select several apps as you can see right here. And it really depends on what you have installed in the very beginning when installing MATLAB. But here are some of the examples. So let's go back to the home. Now, this is the command window as I've just mentioned. And we can type in our first variable. Let's say we want to call our variable A equals 1. And you can see that it's the output is A equals 1. And this variable has been saved to our workspace on the right hand side with the value 1. Now, if you want to suppress the output, like above, we can say, for instance, another variable b equals to 10 and put a semicolon at the end. That will suppress our output. As you can see, it's not like above, but we have still created a variable called b with a value of 10. Now, once your command window gets too full, with a lot of variables or things you have written into it, you can always use the command CLC, which stands for clear command window. And if you want to delete your workspace, for instance, you can write clear all. That would delete all the variables. Let's say we want to have the variables again, just for the sake of explanation and you want to only delete one variable, then we would write clear A. And as you can see on the right hand side, our A vanished from the workspace. We can still 
create another variable a and recreate it we can also do the same for the variable b and as you have seen b vanished if we do not assign a number to a specific variable name let's say uh, we just write 10 plus 10 it will assign the solution to ants so the latest answer and it will also be saved as ants in our workspace as we can see right here now if you write another command let's say another addition 20 plus 40 it will overwrite this latest answer and update the latest answer in our workspace now what we can also do is we can select a variable right click on it and save it as a so-called mat file we can save it now in our current directory let's call it uh, var a for variable a save it and now if I delete the variable a it has vanished let's now imagine this was a big important variable or array or struct where you have saved a lot of stuff into it and now you are sad because your variable has vanished that's absolutely no problem because if you have saved it during runtime or somewhere in your script you can always double click on this saved mat file and it will load the variable into back into your workspace as you, as you can see right here so very easy and convenient now one thing to note here is that if you save all the variables inside of your script which we will talk later about you should not reuse it all the time so once you have saved all the variables in, or relevant variables into a mat file you should remove or comment this saving process inside of your script because if you always save all the variables it's very time consuming and will affect your memory now I will just clear the command window again and clear all the variables another example I want to show you is let's say we have some variables again let's say we have again a equals 10 and c equals 20 and we create another variable let's call it x1 equals 50 and x2 equals 100 now what you can do if you have more variables you can type in who then all the variables that are available will be listed now if you type whose with so who with an s and the end you will see all the variables the size of the variables as well as the memory that has been allocated to this variable and also the class and also some attributes if they are available so let's say right now we want to delete not only one x but both axes because they are just redundant what we do is we type in clear x with a star symbol like this this would delete both axes because this this star symbol here means that it should delete all variables starting with an x and whatever comes behind that now talking about the help function let's just clear the command window again and clear the workspace so now talking about the help function we can use the help command and type in the function name that we want to investigate let's say we want to know more about plot that will open inside the command window the whole help for the plot function and what it does and how you can use it we clear the command window again and we can also do this with a documentation let's say doc plot this would open a documentation in a separate window and is way bigger and contains much more information than the help function so it's really up to you what you want to use in the doc you can find basically everything you can also look for functions that have a specific name in them let's say we say look for and then let's say exit it will look for all the functions that have the name exit inside of them so right now we have five functions that contain this exit word inside of them and you could do that for everything at least if the name is available last but not least I want to show you how you can open demo projects if you just type in demo a separate window will open 
and here you can see very beginner friendly examples for instance about basic matrix operations and some other relevant stuff that's very interesting and if you are getting started with MATLAB just make sure to use this demo and see what's useful for you and your application and I hope that you can learn from it. Now what you can also do is if you have a command, let's say plot, you can click the F1 button and then you see the doc would open right away. We can use this for another command, let's say exit and click F1. This would show some information about the exit function and you don't have to be like, you have to, don't have to mark the whole thing or you can just be anywhere from in front of this command and click F1 and the help will pop up. So this was the second video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And in the next video, we're going to talk about the basic syntax. Finally, uh, getting started with the basic arithmetic, how you can use addition, subtraction, how you can use scripts to save your work. I'll show you the three magic C's uh, that I have already announced in this video how you can use them and also how you can create sections with the percentage operator or comment and uncomment code. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. And as always, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are coming and live every day to the fullest and engineer your mind every day. Peace. <laughs>